Let's run through them again. Liu in two, Oliveira of Brazil in three, Pistorius in four, Brown of the States in five, Johnny Peacock, home favorite in six. Prosthetics allow South modern Africa medicine to restore human abilities. Two Americans Without this technology, in one unfortunate accident could cause the permanent loss of one's ability to perform a specific task. For example, a grenade explosion could cause a soldier to lose his leg, therefore removing his ability to walk. A prosthesis replaces a limb or body part and grants the user some or full utility. The improvement of prosthetic technology will greatly improve the restoration of bodily functions of amputees or serious injury victims. On a societal scale, prosthetic innovation will reduce the long-term impact of serious injuries or amputations and improve the general health and activeness of the global population. Success in designing prostheses could mean, say, reducing the number of people in wheelchairs or out of employment due to amputation of an arm. The design of completely functional prosthesis depends largely on the type of material used. The chosen material needs to interact perfectly with the anatomical, biological, and chemical properties of the client's body. Given our budding knowledge of material science and engineering, we find the choice of materials in a prosthesis to be very interesting. It is a clear-cut example of how the analysis of the structural, mechanical, and chemical properties of a material can determine the functionality of a larger scale product. Polypropylene, like most plastics, is unreactive and lightweight. It does not deteriorate due to bacterial exposure, making it a buffer against any possible infections. It additionally does not absorb water, making it useful in the wet environment around the human body. Polypropylene does not shatter easily and is a tough material, making it a suitable replacement for bone. Polyethylene is the most widely used plastic in the world, and thus is readily available. It is even tougher than polypropylene, is unreactive and can be processed into low and high density forms. Polyethylene, along with polypropylene, do not contain BPA and are not harmful to the body. Thermoplastics used in prosthetics have high yield strengths, making them unlikely to deform. However, like all plastics, they will deform past their yield strength and have a large plastic region. Since significant deformation can occur past this point, thermoplastics have a reduced risk in shattering. Compared to other materials, thermoplastic stress strain graph covers more area, signifying a higher toughness. Changes in the process of forming thermoplastics lead to changes in material properties. For example, adding plasticizers increases flexibility, ductility, and toughness while reducing hardness and stiffness. A thermoplastic is defined as plastic that can be melted and recast an indefinite number of times. The mentioned thermoplastics can appear in several forms, with each form having a different molecular weight and length. These, in turn, affect melting point. The easier it is for polymer chains to move, the lower the melting point will be. Ease of movement is decreased by longer polymers and increased by branching. Some plastics, such as polyethylene, are semi-crystalline. Crystalline phases appear along with amorphous phases. Crystal structure does affect properties. A higher percent volume of crystallized polymer leads to lower elasticity. There are many key benefits when using thermoplastics like low-density polyethylene and polypropylene for prosthetic sockets. The key benefits of thermoplastic polyethylene are flexibility, being comfortable yet resistant to bending and compression, and being lightweight. Flexibility allows for the plastic to form comfortably to the amputee's limb and follow the amputee's movements. If the socket wasn't flexible, it would be brittle and easily crack under pressure and strain from everyday use. While the plastic is flexible and provides more comfort than, say, a metal or wood material, thermoplastic material is also resistant to bending and compression. That means that the material is strong enough to withhold pressure, yet flexible enough to mimic the amputee's movements. Material that could easily bend would not be ideal for holding a person's weight. Having a heavy material attached to the amputee's limb would limit movement and take more energy to move around. The lightweight thermoplastic, like low-density polyethylene, enhances movement and lightens the load. Other benefits when using polyethylene and polypropylene include cost effectiveness, durability, moisture resistance, easy processing, pleasant appearance, varied degrees of thickness, matching each socket with skin color, and availability through most local plastic manufacturers. There are many, many benefits when using thermoplastics for prosthetic sockets, but there are also liabilities. Liabilities can include shrinkage and comfortability and moisture collection. 
Thermoplastics tend to shrink when heat is applied, but the shrinkage rate is barely noticeable. Over time, wear and aid can cause the socket to become uncomfortable to the user. Lastly, since polyethylene is moisture resistant, the moisture not observed can slide off the plastic and can cling to the skin that touches it. If skin is constantly wet, it can become too soft, easy to tear, and become dead. All in all, benefits of flexibility, resistance to bending and compression, and lightness of thermoplastics outweigh the few liabilities. With that said, there is always room for improvement to make the material even better for prosthetic use. The use of thermoplastics are already an improvement for the materials used in prosthetics. With more advanced engineering, their already fantastic properties can be enhanced further. For example, polyethylene can be improved in prosthetics by using low-density polyethylene, LDPE, less dense than polyethylene, leading to it being lightweight. Engineers are looking at copolymers as well to see what combinations will lead to improved durability and fit. How the processing into low-density polyethylene can affect the structure and properties. Polyethylene can be processed by using high pressure and high heat methods, copolymers, molding, extrusion, and free radical polymerization. Low-density polyethylene is processed to produce a more branch structure as opposed to linear. The branching affects the degree of crystallinity and therefore affects the density. The branches in low-density polyethylene prevent the molecules from fitting closely together, which gives it a low density. The branching also increases the ease of movement, which contributes to its desirable properties such as being ductile, flexible, lightweight, and having high resilience. More research is being done as well to see how processing that adds more crosslinks between the chains increases the strength and durability of the material. The properties enhanced from processing are especially useful for prosthetics because they make the device more comfortable and customizable for everyday use. Polypropylene can be processed in similar ways using molding, extrusions, and copolymers to change its molecular structure and toxicity and thus produce desirable properties. The structure of polypropylene is generally isotactic, meaning that all the side groups are on the same side of the main chain. Additionally, it has a semicrystalline structure, thus giving it the strength of a crystalline structure, but also the flexibility of an amorphous structure. This allows for a lower elastic modulus than a fully crystalline structure. The lower elastic modulus makes it more elastic and less rigid, which allows for better fit and wear for patients. Furthermore, they do not gradually soften with a temperature increase. Instead, semi-crystalline materials remain solid until a given quantity of heat is absorbed and then rapidly change into a low viscosity liquid. This is very useful for processing since polypropylene is typically processed using injection molds and vacuum forming to fit the exact shape of the patient's body. As you can see from the material science triangle, engineering has improved greatly to produce methods to enhance properties such as strength and flexibility. Manufacturers are working hard to find ways to process these thermoplastics by modifying the molecular structure and bonds so that there is less and less limitations of the material. With the great advancements being made every day in engineering, thermoplastics can attain properties that are optimal for the patient and manufacturers.